Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k. We've got an experimental video for you today. It's still a list build video, but more of an experiment. Now we want to ask the question, what's the maximum amount of models we can have in a Necron 2000 point list? So we're going to get onto that today, do a 2000 point list, maximum model count, and kind of work out if it's actually competitive or not in the current game. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. So we're going to be using the Arts of Omen Detachment, of course that's the current chapter approved book that we are using for that rule set. So we're using that detachment and we're going to also be using the Nihilak Dynasty code and we'll get onto more why later in this video. It is my preferred code but we'll get onto that. Right so we need a HQ, we've got to go with the cheapest option here. So we've got the option of two here that are identically in terms of points, you've got the Necron Lord or a Plasmancer. Now I've gone with the Necron Lord because I want to use the Lord's will ability to reroll our hit rolls of a 1. But Necron Lords are 65 points, nice and cheap. We're going to take the Staff of Light, which is, which is a free upgrade for the weaponry, as well as spending a Command Point for the Veil of Darnish Relic, because spending a Command Point isn't going to affect the model count, so we may as well put on a Relic here, Veil of Darnish Relic on our Necron Lord. Now let's get on to the troop selections. We've got three identical units of 20 Necron Warriors. They are the cheapest in terms of troops. Of course, they're going to be 11 points per model, so it's going to be 220 points per unit, we're going to have 3 units, that's going to be 660 points for just our troop selections alone. Now they are going to be taking the Gorse Reapers because that's the better option, strength 5, minus 2 AP, 1 damage, with 60 of them, pretty good. So we're going to go with 60 of those guys. Moving on to the Elites, we've got 3 identical units of 20 Flayed Ones. Of course they're also cheap, they're 10 points per model, 200 points per unit, that's 600 points for the 3. They've got their Flare Claws, which are pretty good in melee. They've also got the Deep Strike ability. But more importantly for this video, it's the model count, isn't it? We want to get the maximum amount of models here. So we've got 60 Necron Warriors, 60 Flayed Ones. Just that alone is 120 models for our model count. So yeah, we're getting a lot of models out of that. So let's move into our Fast Attack, really. The Fast Attack, three identical units of nine Canoptic Scarabs. 15 points per base, 135 points per unit, and when you've got 3 units that's 405 points but you're now getting 27 more models to our model count. So that's why we're doing that, they've got 4 wounds a pop, 4 attacks a pop. Okay they are quite squishy with toughness 3 and a 6 plus armor save, but they're quite resilient. You've got to put a lot of firepower or a lot of melee attacks into them to get rid of them off the board. They can be used for screening, they can be used for scoring. So yeah, definitely worth having that amount of Canoptic Scarabs for this list. Sticking with the fast attack, we've got some Tomb Blades, a maximum unit of 9 Tomb Blades. And I'm going to be selecting the Particle Beamers because that's the free option. We don't need to take the Twin Gorse Blasters or the Tesla Carbines because you have to actually pay for those weapons. We want the free options because we want the model count here. So it's going to be 162 points for the 9-man unit. And to further add to this, we're going to take an additional unit of 6 of them. This is purely because of points now. If I could take 9, I would take 9, but we've got 6 more here in a single unit. Again, Particle Beamers. This time it's 180 points, 108 points rather, not 180. So in total, in fact that does finish the list, so in total we've got 1 Necron Lord, 60 Necron Warriors, 60 Blade Ones, 27 Canoptic Scarabs, 15 Tomb Blades, that's 163 models in a 2000 point list. If you can find a way of getting more models into a 2k list, let me know down in the comments below. I couldn't work it out, but maybe you can. So how would this do? So there's a crap ton of bodies here, isn't there? 163 bodies within the Hillac Dynasty, so all of them have got objectives secured. So if, in theory, if I'm using this list, I want to be flooding the board here. I don't want to let my opponent's units breathe. If we've got the units taking complete board control, dominating the battlefield, dominating the objectives, whether it's the primaries, whether it's the secondaries, we need to dominate the board. Not only that, we've got units that can deep strike. We've got the single use Veil of Darkness relic. We've got quite fast units with the Tomb Blades, the Canoptic Scarabs. So when it comes to actually scoring, I think Treasures of Aeons is a must. We're going to be with Obsec. Treasures of Aeons, I think, is an absolute must here for this list. It should be scored quite easily for me. Now you could argue a point that either Ancient Machineries or potentially Raise the Banners. Partly depends on the mission, I guess. Now Ancient Machineries, you could be doing this with 162 out of 163 of these models, it's only the Necron Lord that can't actually do Ancient Machineries because it's not Canoptic or Core. Everything else has Canoptic or Core. But with banners, which I think I would prefer with this list, you've only got to hold up three banners for the entire game. And you can do all three within the same turn in fact because it's not restricted to one per turn. You could do all three in a single turn, flood the battlefield so your opponent can't get anywhere near it or anywhere near these banners and just hold ground. 
you should easily max out that secondary. I mean, we've got enough infantry to sit down and just sit on halfway of the board. Now, we do lack in the heavy department, of course, but where we lack quality, we've definitely got quantity. We've got a lot of shots with the Necron Warriors, a lot of attacks with the flayed ones. The Tomb Bays are going to add to the attacks on top of that with the shots, with the Particle Beamers. So yeah, not much in quality, but there's quite a lot of shots there. Now, it would be nice to have some more buffing characters within this list, but every single character that you add will then, of course, take away from the amount of models we can actually take for this list. And after all, we are trying to experiment with the maximum model count here. So I've only gone with the Necron Lord, buffing core units with their Lord's Will ability. Now, we could have taken the Plasmancer, but he's not really buffing anything. And the Chronomancer is a little bit more expensive. The Technomancer is a little bit more expensive. So yeah, we've gone with the Lord's Will with the Necron Lord. So if we were to take an all-game command protocol, I think there's only one option that I think about, which would be the Protocol of Sunstorm. Adding one to the movement, pretty good, but also being able to do an action and still fire, especially if we're doing Raise the Banners or Ancient Machineries. That's going to really help with those and still being able to fire on top of that. Now, there are other options that you could take. I mean, Protocol Hungry Void for your Flayed Ones, the Protocol of Vengeful Stars for your Warriors and Tomb Blades. They could help. Maybe the Protocol of Eternal Guardian for the cover save if you don't move. Yeah, that could also help. I mean, they all could help, really, with this list. Now, let's talk about some weaknesses before we end the video today. There are, of course, some glaringly obvious weaknesses. First of all, we're going to be giving up no prisoners. That's an absolute... Well, we kind of do that anyway. As Necron plays, we give up no prisoners because of the reanimation stuff. But we're definitely going to be giving that up. 15 points is in the bag for your opponent. We've got that many models. The kill tally is going to be huge for them. Now, we've got no major threats in our list. We've got no Katarn Shards. We've got no Locust Heavy Destroyers. So we are really relying on our strength 5 weaponry to take out the bigger stuff. Again, quantity, quantity over quality here. The amount of shots we take, well, the amount of shots we do hopefully can still get rid of the bigger stuff, even if they're toughness 8. We're hoping that we can still do that kind of damage in numbers. Now again, we're lacking the buffing characters, we're lacking Technomancers, we're lacking Chronomancers, even the Silent King. So unfortunately, we're going to have to just go with what we've got. We can't have a, a plus one to our attack hit rolls with the Necron Warriors, with my will be done. We haven't got any of that kind of stuff. And also, we've got nothing that's really tanky. We've got nothing that's, you know, there's no quantum shielding, for example. We've got no quantum shielding. We've got no, we've even got invulnerable saves. I don't think we've got any invulnerable saves in the list at all. So things are going to go down and we are going to have to rely on reanimation protocols. Which kind of makes me reconsider the command protocols. Would the Undying Legions be a better option? I uh, don't know, we'll have to come back to that one. But the final point to this list, I mean, our hordes, or our horde list is probably nowhere near as good as a Tyranid horde list, for example, or an Orc Boy horde list. I just don't think we compete with those kind of lists when we're talking about hordes. But, to counter that, are they obset? We've got everything is obset here, this entire list is objective secured, and we've got reanimation protocols, as we've just mentioned, which is going to make us... Fairly resilient. One in three of our models is going to keep coming back up every single time. So yeah, that would be an absolute pain in the butt to play against for me. I'm going to do a few more of these experimental lists and just see where they go. I think they're quite fun to do. And maybe even fun to try out with your friends in just friendlier games. I wouldn't necessarily say take this to a tournament. But you never know. It could be quite good. Let me know down in the comments below if you've got any experiments that you want me to run. And I'll try and do it for you. So guys, other than that, all that is left to say... Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.